Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Tiny Towns. This was sent to me by AEG, and it's designed by Peter McPherson. You are the mayor of a tiny town in the forest where the smaller creatures of the woods have created a civilization hidden away from predators. This new land... I did not know this was animal themed until now. <laughs> this new land is small and the resources are scarce. You take what you can get and never say no to building materials. Cleverly plan and construct a thriving town and don't let it fill up with wasted resources. Whoever builds the most prosperous tiny town wins. Let me show you how to play. In this game, your town is represented by this 4x4 grid. You will place resource uh, cubes in specific layouts to construct buildings. Each building scores victory points in a unique way. When no player can place any more resources or construct any buildings, the game ends, and any squares without a building are worth minus one point. The player with the most points wins. Now, at the start of the game, you have a selection of cards you pull out. Uh, you always pull out the cottage card. Uh, in this case, it's this formation, and one three points of this building is fed. And then you pick out one of each color from this. There's a wide selection of them. Each player can also pick two monument cards from a deck. Pick one uh, to, that they can build. They all have different abilities. I'll get into that later. How the game works is one player is the master builder to start. The master builder will name a type of resource, which are these cubes. Wood, wheat, brick, glass, or stone. Uh, generally for us, we just usually go by color, but uh, yeah. So they could be like, all right, brown wood cube. That means every player must now take a brown wood cube and place it on their grid. Uh, so they could put it here. Maybe another player, I'll just show you, let me like the differences here. Another one puts one here. Um, once you've placed down cubes, they can never be moved. Uh, they can only be removed by constructing a building. Only one resource or building may occupy a square. And when resources are removed from the board, they go back to the general supply. Now, if any buildings were constructed, you would uh, do so, but obviously right now we only have one cube each. Uh, once everyone's decided where their resources are gonna go, uh, a new round begins and this token passes to the player on the left. So let's say as the, as it goes, the, the next person says orange and then they put down orange cube. I'm, I'm not putting these very thoughtfully, just putting them down uh, blue and we put, put something like this. And, and then finally, yellow, uh, until so yellow is called, and this happens. Uh, now, this one is not a cottage, uh, but this one is. So, what happens is the player has the option, if they want, to turn this into a cottage. What you would do, if you were, chose to do so, is you remove the resources, take the wooden building with the supply, and place it in one of those three squares. Buildings don't have to be constructed as soon as resources are in place. Uh, you can wait as many rounds as you want to construct a building, and you can do multiple buildings at once. Um, they may never be moved to a different square after being placed. Any player can construct any of the buildings except your secret monuments. Now remember, for this to score points, you need to build a farm at some point. So you're hoping, as you're placing these cubes down, that you'll have the right configuration to eventually make a farm. If you have that, you can remove those tiles, not tiles with cubes, and place on a farm. And now that cottage is fed. It has a farm to feed it. Now you just keep doing this. Just each person takes a turn calling a color and you're just placing down the cubes uh, until uh, everyone uh, can no longer play anything. Because uh, when your town is filled with resources and you cannot place, construct any buildings, your town is done. You're out of the game, you start calculating your score, and you can no longer be the master builder. When the game is all done, um, you remove all remaining resource cubes, and each empty square is worth minus one point, and then you score based off the rules of the buildings. Now, there are a lot of different cards in the deck, uh, to, but this is kind of the base set. Let's, let's just kind of go over some of these. So, a farm feeds four... Uh, cottages or that type of building anywhere in your town they don't give you points but they give cottages points so if i had four cottages by the end on a farm each of those is three points each like even if you don't have enough it's still three points each the theater is one point for each other unique building type in the same row and column as it so you would uh see count like let's say if it was here 
um, and there were you would just count how many other unique building types there and get a point for each. Factories, when you construct those, uh, you place one of the five resources on it, uh, and when a another player names this resource, you may place a different resource instead. So you put down the factory, and let's say put down gray. So you go, okay, um, I, whenever anyone calls gray, you decide, okay, I don't want to put down a gray. I'm going to put down a different cube instead. Taverns are based on how many just different taverns you have um, based on this chart. So if you have five taverns, that's 20 points. Chapels are one point for each fed cottage. And the wells are one point for each adjacent cottage. Now let's take a look at some of the, the special monuments you can build. Here's one, the statue of the bond maker. When another player names a resource, you may choose to place it on a square with a cottage. Each of your cottages can hold one resource. Uh, so that's a way to make it so you're not messed up by other players. Grandma's Lamb of the Rodina. Your unfed cottages are worth three points each. Uh, but yeah, all of these different buildings are made in different configurations. Uh, so if I had brown, orange, gray, gray, orange, I can choose to build it into, I could put like a yellow cube. That's pretty much it. You're just, take turns calling out a color, everyone puts on a cube, uh, and you're just trying to build the best town you can. Um, there are all sorts of different ones you can swap in, uh, but otherwise, that's pretty much the game. So this game is a lot of fun. It's elegant, it's simple, but it's still a fun brain burner sort of game. I actually think the game is pretty forgiving. The manual describes it, oh, it's so tricky, but... It's, it's not that bad. It, it does get trickier the more players you have and as time goes on, but I don't know. I think it's actually pretty generous in its, in its difficulty. Uh, I'm a big fan of these easy-to-learn simultaneous play games. Uh, this one, the different building types add a lot of fun variation, but otherwise, the simplicity is very satisfying. Someone picks a cube, everyone has to place it, even if you don't want to. Uh, just try your best to build your stuff without ruining everything. The buildings interact with each other in really interesting ways, and I think the monuments are actually the most interesting part of the game because that makes everyone's objectives differ slightly, and that's going to be more likely for chaos uh, in cube selection, which I enjoy. Uh, in fact, I actually wish the game had more stuff like that to make the cube selection even more varied and tricky. And yeah, you can swap in the buildings, but I kind of like I kind of wish more players had more like unique stuff that was only specific to them. I think that's cool. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, uh, nothing else much to add here. It can be learned almost instantly, and there are a lot of interesting decisions to make. Uh, it's breezy, but thinky, and I get a lot of joy of watching people go, Argh! as colors they don't need get called, or the color they need just won't get called. That's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, just a good time, and uh, the, the I would recommend it. It's, it's, it's fun. Um, little simple, but I, I still think it's, it's a, a very solid game.